Hi everybody, this is Kefren, your favorite French Canadian. Today I'm going to show you how to boost your FPS in Borderlands 4. We're going to start by optimizing Windows, and after that we're going to take a look on your Nvidia and Radiant Barometer, and at the end we will go inside of your game. So now for Windows, we're going to start by writing settings, and we're going to go to the settings of Windows 11. We're going to start by gaming over there. So the first one is game bar. This one I really recommend to deactivate it. It's causing issue and also you're losing some FPS with it. Except if you have a Ryzen uh, CPU, the 7900X 3D or the 7950X 3D, they're using uh, the game bar uh, to prioritize your CCD when you're playing video games. So super important to use that if you have those processors. If you have any other processor, just deactivate it. After that, we're going to go to graphic. We're going to change default graphic setting over there. Make sure that your hardware accelerated GPU scheduling is at on. Super important to do that. We're going to go to gaming again. Capture, capture. Make sure that everything is deactivated like this. So uh, you want to save all your resources. And the last one is game mode. Now game mode honestly is really, really good. Back then with Windows 10, it was a bit sketchy and a lot of like stuttering issue. But now you really need to using it uh, to make sure that all your resources are pri prioritizing your video games. Another thing that I recommend, we're going to go to system is your power. Uh, back then, uh, we were recommending to use the best performance, but now honestly just use balance you will have better boost clock longer boost clock uh, i did a couple of benchmark balance versus per best performance and honestly i'm getting better result with balance so super important to do that another thing uh, i want to mention is some recommendations so make sure that your uh, xmp profile is activated if you have it on your bios super important Make sure that you download the latest uh, chipset driver for your cpu if you have an amd or intel also, make sure that you update your BIOS to make sure that you have all the latest updates from your uh, CPU or your uh, uh, motherboard provider. Make sure that you have your Windows update up to date. And the last one is also make sure that you have the latest driver from your GPU. So if you have an NVIDIA card, Radeon or Intel, super important. They always push new update and they optimize a lot of stuff in it. So for NVIDIA, make sure that you have your latest driver from NVIDIA because uh, your Borderlands 4 game will be compatible with those DLSS settings. So normally what I recommend, it's not uh, override your DLSS uh, one by one. I recommend now to do it in the global setting. If you don't have those options, go to setting about and make sure that you opt in for the beta version. I have a dedicated video on this. So the first thing that you want to do is your DLSS override. Click on it. Make sure that you click latest because you want to push the latest version of frame generation, the latest version of ray reconstruction and the latest version of super resolution. So normally uh, in some games, they don't necessarily have the latest version of DLSS. So now each time that you will boot any game that it's compatible, you will always use the latest one from uh, NVIDIA. So uh, and in Borderlands 4, it's the uh, DLSS 4. So it's a pretty good DLSS version. Low latency mode, I recommend to go with on. If you want to cap your frame rate with the app, you can. Me, I lock my FPS at 237 FPS. Because I have a 240 Hertz monitor and I'm using G-Sync, uh, if I go over 240 FPS, I'm going to lose my G-Sync. So that's why I'm using this. And your shader cache size, if you have a lot of different games installed on your computer, I recommend to go with 10 gig or even 100 if you have the space on your disk drive. By default, you're going to use 5. The thing is, if you have a lot of game, you're booting different game, uh, your shader cache will be full. So each time you will need to reconstruct your shader. Uh, so it can be long when you open the game. You can have stuttering and sometimes you're getting corruption with your shader. So I recommend to uh, increase this. In the uh, system setting, if you want to use your G-Sync, this is pretty much where you're going to select it. So go with on full screen and window and select the proper monitor that you're going to use. Make sure also that your monitor is compatible and it's activated on it. Resolution, I recommend to go with native and make sure that you're using the IS refresh rate. I know a lot of folks that buying an eye refresh rate monitor, Windows put 60 Hertz by default and they don't change it. So super important to do that. If you have an HDR monitor compatible with 10-bit color, make sure that you're using 10-bit over there. Make sure that you're using also the output dynamic range at full. And digital vibrance, I like to put 5% more. By default, it's 50 it's it adds a little bit of saturation in your game. Uh, it's less gray, so I like to do that. 
Last tab is performance. Power maximum, I always put it at max 133%. It's going to send more wattage to your GPU. Uh, you're going to get the longer boost clock. For me, it's 5 to 7% boost in my FPS with Borderlands. But the thing is, you, NVIDIA is using an algorithm. So if you you don't have any room on your GPU, you have bad thermals, your GPU is pretty much maxed out, it will not do anything. So just test it out. If you have thermals issue, I'm going to tell you right now, it doesn't work. So you really need the room on on your GPU. So this is pretty much for Nvidia. Now let's go with Radeon. So now for Radeon card, we're gonna go to settings, display first. Make sure that you're using your FreeSync. If you have a monitor compatible with it, you're gonna make sure that you're gonna synchronize your GPU with your monitor. So really important to use that. After that, we're gonna go to gaming in the graphics section. Make sure that you're using the custom profile, so don't use those presets over there. Make sure that you're selecting your GPU. In my case, it's a 9070 XT. Don't use your integrate GPU. It can be tricky if you're playing on a laptop or even a desktop like me that has an integrate GPU. After that, the first one that you will need to look at is your uh, FSR 4 that you can force in some game that it's uh, using FSR 3. This one, uh, it's not necessarily everybody will have it. It really depends if your card is compatible with it. So definitely enable it if you have it. Also, I want to mention if you're playing in a game that uh, doesn't have FSR, doesn't have frame generation and you're struggling with your FPS, fluent motion frame can be a nice uh, option over there. You activate it, you're going to get like 30 to 30% boost. It will add input lag, so don't use that if you're playing a competitive game. But this one can help with an uh, older game. Uh, don't use anti-lag one. This one is not good. Don't use a radiant boost. Radiant chill, I really recommend to use it. And I will explain you why. So for an example, in my case right now, I have a 170 Hertz monitor. And to stay in your free sync range, you need to be, uh, you need to produce less than 170 FPS. So my recommendation is take your amount of Hertz on your uh, monitor. In my case, it's 170. Do minus three and lock your FPS at 167. You can do the same thing if you have a 240 Hertz monitor. Go with 30, uh, 237. Uh, so you're always going to make sure that you stay in your free sync range. It's better for uh, the fluidity of your image. And also, really important, if you want less input lag, you need to make sure that your GPU is not at 100% utilization. So uh, 98, 97, something like that. So sometimes it's good to just lock your FPS. Again, it depends on the game. Maybe in some game, 160 F 67 FPS will be... 100% uh, utilization for me, so you can go maybe a little bit lower. You can also do it per game. Right now in the graphics section, I'm doing it for all my games on my computer, but sometimes, I don't know, you're playing the new Assassin's Creed, just go to Assassin's Creed, and you can lock your FPS over there if you want. So really important to do that for your uh, utilization, but also to make sure that you're staying in your free sync range. Another thing that I want to mention, image sharpening too can be nice if you don't add FSR in-game or a sharpness slider. Uh, so if you're playing an old game or a game that just have like TAA and the game is very blurry, activate this and move your slider between something 60 to 70% depending on your preference. And it will really help to have a better image quality. Last thing that I want to mention, if you have some random stuttering and you don't know why, this option at the end can be really nice. It resets your shader cache, so you just perform a reset. And after that, when you will reopen your game, it will just rebuild your shader. Sometimes it can take time, so don't go too crazy if your game is lagging, but uh, it can help. I, I saw a lot of per person uh, having this issue with Call of Duty, so this one can really help you. So this is pretty much it, guys. Make sure that you have the latest uh, version of your driver and also have a dedicated drive on uh, how to overclock your GPU. For me, it gives me 12% boost in my FPS without too much effort, so you can definitely look at my guide. So now let's go in the game. So now for the in-game setting, let's go with display mode. I recommend to go with full screen with this one. Make sure that you're playing native. For your display stat, I like to use all. You will have a couple of stat over there. So if you don't use MS Afterburner or the one from Steam, you're going to see your FPS, uh, GPU and ping. Um, you can also limit your frame rate inside of the game if you want. I'm not using vertical sync. It adds input lag. And also if you're using G-Sync or free sync, you don't need that. And the field of view over there, just to make sure that if you add more, you're going to lose some FPS. By default, it's at 90, so just keep this in mind. 
In the advanced setting now, we're gonna start by the upscaling method. So you have four different ways that you can do it. TSR, and honestly, it's not good. <laughs> so don't use that. DLSS is the best one. It's using DLSS 4. So if you have an RTX card, definitely go DLSS. You have FSR 3.1 and you have XESS, uh, the new version from Intel. So honestly, I recommend to use XESS over FSR in, in this game. It looks great. It's not on par with DLSS, but it's still better than FSR 3. So if you're using DLSS, I recommend to go with quality. You can expect 10% boost uh, in your FPS. You can also use balance for a 15% boost. Uh, the thing is, balance, I don't recommend to use it in 1080p, it's a bit blurry, but if you're using a 1440p monitor or 4K, definitely the LSS4 with balance is pretty good now. You, If you want pure image quality, it's useful resolution. This is DLAA, but you're going to lose 10% in your FPS. If not, go with XSS, XESS, sorry, and use quality. It will do the job. You will have a nice 8% boost in your FPS. If you're using FSR, you're going to have a um, 10 to 11% boost in your FPS. So a little bit more than XESS. But the image quality is better with XESS. So that's why I'm recommend to using it. Screen capture quality, you can stay at full uh, resolution. Um, frame generation, it's available for RTX card. So the DLSS version, uh, 4000 series or 5000 series. I kind of feel the input lag when I'm using it, so for me it's a off, but if you're struggling with your FPS, you have a 40, 60, something like that, and you don't have a good amount of FPS, definitely do some testing, you're gonna get 40% boost, but for me, uh, I'm not a fan of it in this game. NVIDIA reflex low latency, go with on. So now for the settings, a lot of different settings, so I'm gonna show you which one will provide you the most of F FPS. Uh, and again, it's really depend on the, your uh, computer. If you're really struggling to to use the to, to play the game, probably you will have to put more stuff at low. But I'm gonna show you how to optimize it and keep a decent image quality. The first one I recommend to go with medium. Geometry quality I recommend also to go with medium. You're gonna have a nice three percent boost over there. Texture quality, texture streaming speed, and isotropic filtering really depend on the amount of VRAM. If you have 8 gig and more, just max it out. 6 gig go like this, 4 gig go like this, and just go lower depending on the VRAM, as you can see. Foliage density, you have a lot of different options. High and very high are very costly. It's like 3% for each bracket. Medium for me is a good spot for this game, but if you're struggling with your FPS, go with low or even very low. Honestly, at off... The game is a bit flat without it, so my recommendation is start at medium for this one. Volumetric Flug, you can expect 6% boost at medium. It's a good uh, balance over there. But Volumetric Cloud, this one tank your FPS like crazy, so I recommend to go with low. You can expect 8% boost. Shadow Quality, medium again, 6% boost. It's 3% for each bracket. At low, the game looks, um, again, very flat, and uh, you're going to see like the... the, the the low res of the, the shadow quality so medium is a good balance direct uh, directional shadow quality i recommend to go with low and nice five percent boost and just deactivate your volumetric cloud shadows you're gonna lose like six percent fps with this one and honestly you don't really see it when you're playing the game so just go with disable lighting quality i recommend to go with medium a nice four percent boost and you're gonna stabilize your fps reflection tank your fps like crazy in this game so my recommendation is go with low shading quality this one is a bit tricky, honestly. Medium is a good way to play it, but honestly, sometimes, depending on your GPU, eyes can be good. You can see like 1% to 2%. I did some tests on my 27E. I was using 4% for this one, so that's why it's a bit tricky. Start at medium, do some testing, and look at it. For the post-processing, the game looks very blurry with it, so I recommend to just go load and deactivate your motion blur. Put this one at 0 and motion blur quality at off. So this is pretty much it, guys, for the Borderlands 4 uh, guide. If you have any questions, just comment in the YouTube section. Post me your rig, CPU, GPU, and RAM. I will try to help you the best that I can. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Peace.